Greetings, dear friends, and welcome to yet another episode of Sabbath School in Eden, a Bible study program that is brought to you by the Edenvale Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are based on the eastern side of Johannesburg. The Garden of Eden was the first schoolroom. Nature was the first lesson book. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve were the first students, and God himself was the first instructor. It is our hope that through these Bible study sessions, God himself will instruct you in his word. I'm joined today by my brother, and welcome. It's been a while. Brother Herbert, how have you been? No, I'm doing very good, Brother Manika. How has you been doing as well? I'm doing good, thank you. And thank you for taking the time to study with us this um, interesting lesson that we have um, today. But before we um, get into our lesson, I'll ask that you pray for us. Okay, let's pray. Loving, gracious Father, we are so thankful for the time that you've given us, the time, dear Lord, that we can get into your word. We call upon your Holy Spirit to be with us as we start. Be with all those, Father, who will be following this lesson and guide them, Father, into all truth as you've promised. May your blessings be upon each and every one, Father, who is going to be worshiping with us and who is going to be learning with us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you very much for, for the prayer. And... Um, in this series that we've just started, we mm -hmm. are um, studying the, the, under the topic, um, the mm -hmm. Great Controversy. The Great Controversy, yes. And um, the definition has already been given, mm -hmm. what the Great Controversy is. And today we're particularly looking at um, light shines in darkness, and mm -hmm. we are going to uh, go deeper into the study and um, discover what um, God has in store for us today. Yep. I'll read our key text, which comes from John chapter 12, mm -hmm. and the verse is 35. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while mm -hmm. is the light with you. Mm -hmm. Walk while ye have the light, mm -hmm. lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Mm -hmm. So um, walk while the light is still, still with you. While it is. So um, what would be your um, initial thoughts on this uh, scripture? Yes. So, so when we're looking at this um, John chapter 12, um, something that came to my mind was Jesus was coming to an end of his ministry. Mm. And it was just after the time that he had resurrected Lazarus and he goes to dine with them. There is also the Pharisees with their own ill-conceived minds mm -hmm. who are they also coming with whatever that they wanted to go against him. And obviously people were now following him more and more because they had seen the miracle of, La yeah. Yeah, of Lazarus. And they, some were coming even to look and see, is this the truth that is, is alive? Mm. So now we come to that point and there is these people who have got this ill-conceived mind, which we can also take as part of they are bringing in some darkness into whatever that is good that has that happened. Had done, yeah. yeah, that it, he had done. So he comes then, and what I see is something that is very beautiful about Jesus is the love that he has. Because he understands and he knows their mindset. He knows what they are thinking. He knows what, where they are going mm. with what they were planning. Mm -hmm. But he even comes and he says, um, a little while longer. The light is with you. Mm -hmm. So your time is running out. You yeah. still have got an opportunity. Just a little bit more time. Just a little bit more time. Why don't you do something? And he says, walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtakes you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. So I was just looking at it, and, and a very simple example that came to my mind is, um, when you take light and darkness, light is helpful to someone who is comprehending it. Mm -hmm. So if I close my eyes, for example, if I just close my eyes, whether it's noonday and the light is so shining, and I start walking with my eyes closed, the light that is out there, as long as I don't comprehend it, it's not going to help me. It's not me. of benefit to you. It doesn't go, it's not going to benefit me. Mm -hmm. But it needs me to open my eyes, then I comprehend it. Then it starts to be beneficial for me to see where I'm going and what I'm doing. So basically, Jesus is saying, your time is running out, but why are you still have time? Do something about it. Do something. And um, as you know, the, the, there's a proverb that says, uh, make hay while the sun yes. shines. That's, mm -hmm. that's basically what is, um, that basically what is being expressed in this text, that time is running out. Mm -hmm. But while there is still some time, yeah. um, take advantage of the light that is there. Mm -hmm. And as we are looking at to today's lesson, 
um, laboring under the te- uh, under the theme light uh, shines in darkness. Um, when we look at the book of Revelation, mm-hmm. um, the Bible depicts the devil in you know in um, some symbolism. Yes, as a dragon mm-hmm. because he wants to destroy God's people. Mm-hmm. As a serpent. Mm-hmm. Also, because of the deception, deception that he wants to bring has, yeah. uh, to God's people, and we we see, um, you know, in the story of um, Eve earlier on in the Bible, where the you know the serpent was cunning and mm-hmm. uh, deceived Eve. So, as we you know get into the introduction of this study, yep. what also is clear is that um, where this great controversy is the battle between yes. good and evil. Mm-hmm. And once upon a time, um, Saturn had a strategy, yes. that of persecution, mm-hmm. uh, but that didn't uh, give the results that he intended because mm-hmm. one writer says, you know, the blood of the martyrs was uh, like right. watering the seed mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. of the gospel. Yep. And where one was killed, uh, mm-hmm. hundreds, you know, um, were, you uh, coming up? were coming up. Mm-hmm. So he changed the strategy and, um, the lesson then goes on to say uh, the strategy that was then he was now using was to flood the churches mm-hmm. with um, you know uh, people that have not been thoroughly uh, trained. trained or mm-hmm. thoroughly equipped mm-hmm. in scripture. So this is what we are going to be to be looking at. And yep. as we see, as we continue to see um, throughout history, God has been with his people. The 4th mm-hmm. and 5th century is a period of time where there was lots of compromise, but mm-hmm. God was with, with his people then. And there was also uh, a group of people that um, continued to, to, to hold on to, to the word. And talking um, about the change of strategy, I don't know if you've got any reflections that you'd like to give on that. Yes. Um, so, so I think it, it has always been the same. Um, and, and when we're going through the lesson, we are told of... Um, People were being put into lion's dens. Mm-hmm. People were being hanged. People were being different persecution yeah. methods that were being done. Put on stakes and, 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 yeah. and the whole point of all those persecutions was just to silence the people mm-hmm. so that they don't raise the bar of Jesus Christ above. Mm-hmm. They don't make people know about Jesus. Mm-hmm. They don't make people hear about Jesus. So the more he tried to do that, the more the gospel was even going further. Yeah. And now, the easiest way now to do it is, he sees now I cannot destroy this word because the more I'm trying to destroy it, the more people actually love it and thirst for it. Mm. So what do we do? We still leave the word being there, but what, what then does it do? You just twist it a little bit. So whatever that was the truth back then, whatever that is the truth right now, within and as we are working with that truth, he's just twisting it a little bit so that it just becomes a... a like a short left, yeah. Okay. Instead so, of saying exactly what he's supposed to say, I've I've heard uh, of expressions of a blue lie, a white lie, a white lie. The white lie is suggesting <laughs> that it's something very small, of a, yeah. and it's insignificant. It doesn't have any impact. But when we come to the truth, to the word of God, um, would you? What would your comment be on um, the white lie, if I can put it across that way? So, like, for, for example, um, maybe I can put it differently to say, um, um, when we look at the Word of God, mm-hmm. um, and as you've, uh, as you've said in your expression that he just made a, you know, a short lift, mm. uh, you know. So, uh, in doing this, Saturn was uh, trying to come up with these so-called white lies. Something that appears to be true, but uh, not entirely true. Maybe 99% true, and 99%. what is the danger of that? Yes. Um, and, and it goes back to the example that you gave earlier on, um, the example of, of Eve. He takes exactly almost what God has said, mm. but he just is a little bit of, you should, you will not surely, of course you will die, mm-hmm. but not, not sure. surely. So, so, so to, to, to an open eye, if I don't have any light and I'm just walking in darkness, I don't see any, any, any change in that word. Mm-hmm. But for someone who has, got be, who has been walking with God, who has been staying in the word of God, and who has been eating the word of God, you would understand that he has just twisted what God has said because God was true when he said, you will surely, you surely die, die. Yes. if you do eat this of this tree. Mm-hmm. The day you disobey, you surely, you surely die. die. But he's just saying almost like, you guys can go ahead and disobey because God was not serious about 
the the the, the consequences mm. of going against him like he said because you would die but not surely yeah. but you would then wonder what the difference between surely die and dying either of the two is the difference is the same the difference is the same then also we look at um you know compromise as one of certain uh, mm-hmm. subtle strategy yes. and um i'd like us to start by defining what is compromise mm. so when we talk about compromise we've put a standard Mm-hmm. There is a bar that has been put. And when you start doing el- things even a little bit lower than the bar that has been set, then we are compromising. Because God has said, obedience, there is blessings. Mm-hmm. Then we just say, yeah, you can obey some of them, but some of them you can... Not entirely. You, not entirely. Mm-hmm. You can leave some of them aside. So the moment we start going just below the bar or the standard that, that has been set, then we are beginning to compromise uh, our standards. Yep. And um, with compromise, I'm sure we can, you know, the words, I'm sure God will understand. Yes. Or I'm sure yes. um, um, it could be a friend or a partner yep. who understand. But I'd like us to read from John chapter 14, verse mm-hmm. 6, and uh, John chapter 8, verse uh, 44. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I'll read from John chapter 14, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Verse 6, it says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But me. And uh, if you may open for us um, John chapter 8, verse 44. So John chapter 8, verse 44 says, You are of your father the devil, and the last of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks... A lie, he speaks of his own, mm. for he is a liar and the father of it. Mm. So here Jesus um, speaks of himself, mm-hmm. and he also speaks of um, the devil. Of the devil. Um, mm. He says of himself, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Mm-hmm. Uh, no man comes to the father but by me. Mm-hmm. And when he speaks in um, John chapter 8, verse 44, of yep. the devil, mm-hmm. he calls him a liar. And he says when he speaks a lie, he speaks his native tongue. His native yeah, tongue. and what, what contrasts would you bring out from this uh, text? Yes. So, so, so Jesus basically in this text is just telling us that when you follow him, he's there to bring life. And there's a verse where he tells us, I have come with life and I've brought life abundantly. Mm. So all that Christ desires for us is that we have life of good health, life of abundance, life of mm. prosperity, life of living in all goodness. But then the devil on the other side is he's pretending as if he's giving people the life. But at the end of it, um, he's turning it into a lie and a deceitful manner um, of trying to lead the people. Mm-hmm. So then you, you, you see the two sides uh, of, um, of the great controversy that we're dealing with. One is trying to deal and sit in darkness. The other one is trying to bring people into into, into the light where there is life. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I was reading um, earlier on when I was just looking at um, the, the purpose of light. Um, one scientist was saying the absence of light means the absence of life. Because if there's just darkness continuously, then there's, that means there's absence of life. Because if you look even at trees, they begin to they suffer need, if you yeah. keep them in darkness. in darkness. But they need some light for them to be able to even survive. If we look at us people, imagine if you go for a week in darkness, there's complete darkness and mm-hmm. you don't have any light. You, you, you also begin to, <clears throat> begin to suffer. So Christ is saying, he has come with the light and he wants people to then have life that comes out of that light. Mm-hmm. But then the devil is there. There's something that I wrote here that says... Um, Everything that is true comes from Jesus, mm. and this produces life in us. Mm-hmm. And everything that comes from the devil um, is a lie, and it produces death in us. So there's a choice that we're being given in this text. Mm-hmm. Either we follow um, the life that we find in John 14, verse 6, where we follow Christ and he gives us life, or we follow the life of John chapter 8, verse 44, where we might think we're enjoying life in the life of deceit, the life of lies, but there's also consequences that this death that comes out of it. Thank you. And as you were just mm-hmm. uh, speaking and, you know, just um, I was listening to you, um, what also uh, stood out for me is that when Jesus speaks of himself, he says, I am the truth. Mm-hmm. He does mm-hmm. not say, I speak the truth. 
He says, I am the me. truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when he speaks of the devil in mm-hmm. uh, chapter 8, verse 44, he says, he speaks the lie. He's the originator of okay. lies. Mm-hmm. And he speaks mm-hmm. um, lies as his, uh, as his native tongue. Um, he goes on, Jesus goes on to say when he was praying for his disciples and those that would follow after him in John chapter 17, verse 17, mm-hmm. sanctify them with thy truth, thy word is yes, truth. truth. And also when you look at John chapter 8, verse 32, mm-hmm. um, he also says that um, the truth sets us free. Mm-hmm. And now looking at Jesus as the truth mm-hmm. um, and sanctification, um, by the word, the word being true. Mm-hmm. If you may just uh, maybe um, take us through what is sanctification. Yes. So, so, so when, when I look at Jesus and, and he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm-hmm. He says, begin life with me. And if we, if we take the, 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 the whole chain of justification, sanctification, he says, accept me. And I start to live in you. Mm-hmm. And when I start to live in you, I will make you then start to walk in my statutes, start to walk in my commandments. I will be the one helping you and doing the hand holding Mm -hmm. so that you can start being the better person into my righteousness that he wants us to be. And and this is a whole complete contrast with because when you compare then to the devil, the devil, he comes and he lies to you and then he leaves you in the consequences of your life. He doesn't help you after that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 and the more we then stay in the word of Christ, the more we then stay in the word, which is the light, the more we are then transformed for, from our old life into the new life that we, we always wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, I was also going to read um, uh, Proverbs uh, 23, uh, verse 23, where mm-hmm. it says, Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Mm-hmm. So he says, Above all things, love the truth. Love uh, the wisdom and the instruction and the understanding that comes from the word. Mm -hmm. And never let this thing go. Mm -hmm. Once you get it, never let it go. Start living according to it and start living by it. And then it will make you grow and it will make you um, stay in the lines uh, that God desires for us. Yeah. So um, the Proverbs, the verse we've just read, Proverbs 23, 23. It's the sense that I get from it is that um, truth should be for us a Christ position. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm sure there are things that we buy mm-hmm. uh, for ourselves and we don't want to part with mm-hmm. because we price them. They are price positions for us. Yep. So the, the, the wise man is he's writing in the book of Proverbs. They, mm-hmm. He is encouraging us to look at the truth as mm. a price position, something mm. that we cannot and we should not contemplate of selling, mm. reselling, mm-hmm. or, 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 or giving away. Um, what, um, if I may ask, what examples um, uh, do we, can you give today of you know, how Satan distorts God's, God's word? Yeah, so, so, so there are so many ways that that is, is distorting the word. Um, one, one of them could be... Um, the way we even worship, mm. yeah. when it comes to worship, there are so many um, talks around um, the commandment that God has put, mm-hmm. especially when we look at the fourth commandment. Um, he comes with his own ways that he does um, say, this is not the right day of worship. You can worship on a different day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so many people have walked in those uh, statutes and they followed the way that he has said it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so he doesn't change to say, don't worship. You can still worship, but there's an issue for the day of worship mm-hmm. that he then just twists and changes according to his what, to, to his likeness. Mm-hmm. Um, the, 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 there are so many things that he can, he can, he can convert. God says um, we need to, to, for example, dressing, even if you talk of dressing, we're supposed mm-hmm. to dress in a, spe- in a certain way that then portrays the Jesus who lives in us. Mm-hmm. And he twists all those things and he changes them into a way that when people are looking at us, they are not sure now, mm-hmm. are these Christians that we are talking about, are these Christians that we are looking at? Mm-hmm. And, and, and I was thinking uh, today, one of the things um, that, that, that certain is, has also twisted our minds and has changed us in a certain way. Um, we used to walk around with our Bibles. 
mm-hmm. and our Bible speaks volumes of what we are doing and where we are going mm-hmm. and who we are. But these days, you see mostly people who just go to church who are holding a gadget, and that's all I have. And when I'm walking around holding, holding my iPad, what volume does it speak to someone who sees me walking by the street? He doesn't tell them anything. So, so the devil, what all he wants to, pe- to portray to the people is destroy the word. That actually speaks to the people. When people just see you holding a Bible, they know, oh, this is a Christian. So it's no longer visible. It's no longer visible. So he's not saying don't go to church. You still go to church, but you are no longer visible in terms of who you are and who you portray yeah. at the end. And also, um, so many times you, you spoke about the commandments. People have said um, certain of commandments have been nailed to the cross. Yeah. We are no, no longer under the law. Yeah. And, you know, so there's a lot of discussion um, around that, uh, mm-hmm. whether the Old Testament is still relevant today oh, or relevant. we are now just living mm-hmm. in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of um, uh, distortions that uh, the devil brings um, to the word of God just to try and, uh, you know, uh, lead people to, to compromise. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like us to take a break at this moment while we ponder on what we've discussed so far. And when we return, we want to look at uh, savage wolves. Savage what does wolves. this mean? And uh, uh, how? why is the apostle giving us this counsel? Mm-hmm. Uh, dear viewers, please stay tuned. Don't go ab- away. We'll be right back. Thank you for being part of our Seabo School community. We invite you to continue watching and exploring our study together. To access more of our enriching lessons and dive deeper into the teachings, simply download the adult Sabbath school lessons at www.ssnet.org. Sharing this link can make a difference and potentially save a life. Join us in this journey of spiritual growth and discovery. Thank you for being part of our Sabbath school family. Welcome back, dear friends. Um, as we continue to study together the Word of God, I'd like us to turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 20. I'll read from verse 27 to verse 32. Then you can help us un- unpack what um, uh, this portion of Scripture is saying. Acts 20 verse 27 to 32. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God, Mm-hmm. Take heed therefore unto yourselves mm-hmm. and to all the flock mm-hmm. over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed to the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not mm-hmm. sparing the flock. Mm-hmm. Also of your own, sh- of your own selves mm-hmm. shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Verse 31. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Verse 32. Mm -hmm. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Mm-hmm. So um, the apostle has said a mouthful here. Yes. And I would like you to help us understand if we can break down um, this scripture, what is it talking about? Yes. Um, so, so, so the apostle Paul starts by warning the church, um, the, 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 the Ephesus church. And he's saying, I've been walking with you, but be prepared for mm-hmm. what's coming ahead of you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and one thing that I would want, where I would want to start with uh, on, on this is savage wolves. Mm. We might think that he's talking about the animals. We might think he's talking about the, 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 the wild animal, the wolf. The literal. The yeah. literal wild animal. But symbolically, he's actually speaking about people. Mm. And where do we find this? I, I'll just give the verses. We might not read them. Okay. So if you read uh, Zephaniah uh, 3, uh, verse 3, or we can look, read uh, Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 3, um, in Acts 20 that we just read now. Then there's Ezekiel 22, verse 27. I will read that one. Mm. Ezekiel 22, verse 27 says, A prince is 
uh, princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey mm. to shed blood and to destroy souls, uh, to get dishonest gain. He's talking about kings and princes, mm. and he, he likened them to wolves who are preying on the, on the people. Mm. So it's the very same thing that Paul is bringing back to the church that be prepared and be um, ready because they will be ravenous wolves. And the danger of this is these wolves are not coming from outside. From outside. Even the wolves within. are even within the church itself. So, so you start having to have those compromises that we're talking about. Mm. The raising of the bar is being lowered within the church of God. Um, certain things that are supposed to be true are being twisted a little bit because of this ravenous wolf. Mm. And, 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 and it uses quite a strong word, savage. Mm. Savage, when we talk about savage, we are talking about truly destroying. We are not talking about... Yeah. Um, just coming to destroy so that the thing you can still there's be still standing. Life yeah, after there's that. still life after that. You, it, it's savagely to make sure that it's completely destroyed. It's and brutal it's destruction. Yes. Yeah. So, so which is exactly what the devil is desiring for the church. Mm. You can see the church is straining and it's getting stronger and stronger. And when you look at the book of Acts that we read, especially when we read the first chapters, that's when the church was growing mm. and more and more people were added to the church. Relationships between people were getting stronger and people were looking out for each other, more people were added to, to the flock. Now he's warning that the flock that you've built over the years, mm. the devil is now planning to destroy it. And the way he's going to destroy it, it might be through persecution directly where he destroyed the people, but mm. since he was failing in that, he's now coming in and destroying it from, 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 from within. within. So the, and, sorry, just to come in there. So yeah. you spoke, you, you read from Ezekiel. Ezekiel mm. was talking about princes yeah. and kings. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the description he gave them there was that of savage wolves. So, but when we look at what Paul is writing yeah. in the book of Acts, mm -hmm. he addresses overseers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, who are these overseers? And, and he's talking about the, the leaders. So he's saying, take heed of these leaders. Be careful of the ones who are supposed to be overseeing the church. We're supposed to be overseeing the flock. Mm. Um, and, and one of the things that comes in there is um, we need to be careful of the life of the overseers. We need to be careful of the doctrine of the overseers, but they are supposed to be an example to the flock that they are leading, to mm. the people that they are leading, to those followers who are coming after them. They become an example that people look up to. So if those people are start, start then to compromise and then move from the way that they're supposed to be living, it's then very easy to lead astray the whole flock and the whole mm. church to follow them. Because we always have got leaders that we look up to. We always, we always have got um, uh, people that we look up to and they portray the standard that we hope um, is the standard for the church. So as soon as they start going astray, then people also start to follow them through. Yeah, so um, someone might be listening to us and say, oh, so this verse is not applicable to me. I'm not a leader. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a leader in <laughs> any way. Is it, it, is it safe to also yeah. um, understand this in the context of even within our communities yes. by the virtue of us having um, um, encountered Christ, mm -hmm. knowing Christ, mm -hmm. um, that also makes us leaders uh, yeah. who should be portraying Christ in all truth. Mm -hmm. I was trying to think of the, of the verse, maybe you can help me to remember, the one that says you are an epistle that is read by yeah, every, is. every person. Mm -hmm. There should be a verse, a verse that goes along those lines. So, so basically what it says, as soon as you accept Christ, what your actions is what then people read mm. to be what Christ is. Mm. So by the, the example that we show, even ourselves, even though you are not a leader, who is a pastor, who is a, an elder, who is a deacon within the church, in your own example, in your company, you are the example that the that you are the, that epistle that people read, mm. and they will align that to who Jesus Christ is as soon as they see what your actions are and what you do. So you are a written letter. Yeah, written letter. Uh, being a written letter now, um, you know, someone um, said, "Be watch your step." Yes. You could be the only Bible that someone may get someone to read. read. Yes. Yeah. So um, if um, we may not be overseers, we may not be leaders within the the, the, mm. the formal church setting, yes. but in the little corners and spaces that we occupy, yeah. we are letters that are, are read by many, and uh, we can lead many to Christ or 
lead many uh, astray. And just as a food for thought um, to, to your viewers, there are many compromises that we see today. Mm -hmm. And um, as you are there listening to us today, what are those compromises that you can point to? Um, be it in the church, be it in your own life, um, where have you compromised? And what we are starting today is the truth, which is the word of God. And mm -hmm. I'd like us to, to, to maybe move to the next um, section of the study, uh, mm -hmm. which talks about being um, safeguarded by, by the word. Mm -hmm. And in Acts chapter 20, the verse that we've read, verse 32, mm -hmm. yes. Paul ends by saying, I commend to you God and the word. And the word. And why would he do this? Why would he give yes. this as a, a commendation? One thing, the first thing before I get to, to answer the question that you're asking, um, when I was looking at the word safeguard, I just went and looked at a, a definition for it. Mm. Uh, it says protect from harm mm. or damage with an appropriate measure. Okay. So, so, so you are finding a measure that is appropriate to protect yourself from, harm and, from a harm and danger that is coming. And we've been talking about all these compromises. We've been talking about all these strategies that the devil is coming up with. All, all these things that we've been talking about that are coming on the, on the church and on individual as Christians. Mm -hmm. Now we're coming to, to that point where, where we, have got, we need that measure. What is that measure that we need? So Paul is now saying the only measure that you can have is the word of God. Mm -hmm. As long as we are staying in the word of God and only the word of God is the one that can protect us. And why is it so? Because this is inspired by God himself. Mm. And he has given us a manual that can help us uh, to overcome in different circumstances. Um, and when we think of Jesus Christ himself, when he started his ministry, after the days that he had fasted, the devil tried also the very same thing that he is doing for us today. And what did Jesus win him over with? It is he just went into the, it is written, mm -hmm. men shall not. It is written, God has. It is written. So even when we meet everything that we can, we can meet on a daily basis, I think we meet so many challenges today, um, even in our own walks of life, in everything that we do. As long as we remember that it is written, simple things that we can think of, even if you look at the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. themselves, you shall not steal. If you tell your mind, you shall not steal, even when you wanted to steal, that can remind you back to say, no, I'm not going to do so this. So that becomes a safeguard. A safeguard. You, you, if you covet something, then you just remember, oh, God said you shall not covet. Shall not covet. Then you know, I need to stop doing this. Yeah. And you can only do that if the Holy Spirit is there also to still be talking to you. So when we talk of the word, we should always remember also to then pray for the Holy Spirit to guide us into all this truth mm -hmm. and understand. Because he promised, he says, I shall send the Holy Spirit who shall yeah. guide you into no truth. all truth. Yeah. So the more you have the Holy Spirit, the more you can then get that understanding. Which, which then triggers a question on the significance of God's word in the plan of yes. salvation. Mm. Um, if you can maybe elaborate on that. Yep. So, so, so it is in the word of God um, that we then find uh, the, the, pl the plan of salvation um, and, and, and the way um, Jesus lived his life Mm. From the time he was born, the teachings that he had, and the ministry that he went through, the sacrifice that Jesus Christ gave for us, we also find that in the word. The glory that he's promising us on his second coming, we find that in the word. Mm. Even the forgiveness of our sins, mm. we find that in the word, where he says, confess all your sins, and our God is faithful and just, you forgive us, you of all your unrighteousness, mm. right? So we find all these things in the word. If there was no word, we wouldn't know that God loves us that much, that mm. he even sent his own son who came to die for us. Um, so it is only through the word and it is contained in the Bible that we find this whole plan of salvation where we are forgiven of our sins and we know the ministry that Christ is doing for us right now and even the second coming that is going to come back for us in the glorification that we will find right in the end. Yeah, and just to um, maybe go back to the passage of scripture when Jesus was tempted, yeah. where he says, uh, where in response, Jesus says, men shall not live on by bread alone, yes. but by every word that proceeds from mm. the mouth of God. Yeah. Again, we see life in the word. Yes. And that is the redemption mm -hmm. um, that God um, extends to us. Um, John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word, 
Mm-hmm. The word was with God and the word was God. That's so God. embracing that word is embracing Christ, is embracing um, God. And we want to look at, um, you know, the, the danger that we often fall into, um, mm-hmm. you know, the human reasoning. Often yeah. we've got our own suggestions. We've mm-hmm. got, we rationalize things. Um, mm-hmm. If we look at um, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25, it says mm. that there's a way that seems uh, right unto men, but the yeah. end thereof is uh, ways of death or destruction. Mm-hmm. And um, when we read also from Judges chapter 21, verse 25, it mm-hmm. um, talks of a time where there was no king or prince or leader. And people did as they will. And everyone did according to their own, mm-hmm. um, to their own um, as, as they pleased, yes. Mm-hmm. And how do these verses further help us understand the strategy of um, Saturn. So there's a statement that um, came out of the lesson which says, um, truth is not a matter of human opinion. It is a matter of divine revelation. Mm. So, so, so truth, truth I, I, can, I can think whatever that I think in my mind, mm. and that can become truth in my own thinking, mm. right? So, so which goes back to, to what we are reading in Judges chapter 21, where everyone was doing which they thought was right according to their own mind in their own mind mm. because your mind can deceive you that's why even even christ himself in, in the bible the um the bible says guard against your heart mm-hmm. for the matters of life comes out of it mm-hmm. and he even warns us that your mind can deceive you yourself mm. Mm. so we need to be careful and the only way we can be then careful is when we continuously go back to the Bible and then the Holy Spirit guides us into the truth that comes from the word of God mm. and what God has inspired himself uh, to be speaking to us. Um, otherwise, we, we can all do as we, we feel that the right way and we will go astray in that. Yeah, so um, so like the, the, the two passages of scripture that we, we are referring or we are discussing right mm. now, um, what, what's jumping out there is that the, the, the strategy really is to eliminate God's word from yeah. the equation mm-hmm. where um, each one does what they feel is right. Mm-hmm. And also, um, as Proverbs say, there's a way that seems right unto men. Um, you know, okay. just follow, okay. just follow that path. Mm-hmm. And um, are we able really to discover the um, divine truth without the Holy Spirit? No, without the Holy Spirit, we cannot do anything. Um, like Jesus promised himself that I'll send you the Holy Spirit is the only one who can guide you into, into all truth. Because uh, the moment we, we, we then remove um, the Holy Spirit from the equation, then we are running into the danger of uh, following exactly what Proverbs says and, and Judges says, mm-hmm. uh, where we do according to our own will. And then the Bible says the, uh, the scriptures were written by holy men of God as they were moved by the Spirit. By the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, as the author of this volume, is he is the one who mm-hmm. um, uh, can help us understand uh, what is uh, written in this volume. Um, yeah. And you spoke about the mind, um, guarding mm-hmm. the heart, mm-hmm. guarding the mind. Mm-hmm. And the lesson also discusses a uh, battle of the mind. How do you explain this title, the battle of the mind? The battle of the mind. So, so, so light and darkness, Satan and Jesus, the whole thing about the whole controversy is, is all about the mind. To win the mind. To of... win the mind of the, of the people. Mm. The moment I win your mind, I will be able to control you in any way that I want. But as long as that mind is protected, then we are safeguarded. Um, we'll go to uh, Second Corinthians uh, chapter... Um, 4 verse 3 to 6 and then mm. we can second corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 to 6 chapter 4 verse 3 to 6 all right um verse 3 mm-hmm. but if our gospel be hid mm-hmm. it is hid to them that are lost mm-hmm in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, Mm -hmm. lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Mm -hmm. Christ Jesus Mm -hmm. the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Mm -hmm. Verse 6, 
for God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, mm-hmm. hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Yes. So, so basically, when we are talking about the battle of the minds, uh, we are talking about the battle for the perceptions of the people. If I perceive something that results in a judgment, that results in my um, um, the outcome of my decision, we are talking about the mental faculties mm-hmm. of the people that the devil is trying to to to, to control. And 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 here he's saying um, the gospel would be veiled to those who are lost, to those who don't follow it, mm-hmm. but to those who have got an understanding. It is not failed. They fully understand the influence of Satan. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and remember, when, when we are thinking of Satan in the whole gospel, the whole thing that he's trying to do is to control the mind so that you don't see the fullness and the powerfulness of the gospel that Christ is trying to bring to us. Mm-hmm. Where he's saying, I am the truth, the way, and the life. So if the way, truth, the way, and the life, um, and people start following him, then we have got uh, that everlasting life that then comes thereafter. Mm-hmm. So once he then wins the mind, he can then fail that gospel and remove it from um, the benefit that we are supposed to, to have. Right. And uh, Paul also, uh, maybe as we, as we near the, the end of the study, mm-hmm. Paul also in this um, um, scripture talks about um, the God of this world, mm-hmm. the God of this world, mm-hmm. which um, is an expression that... Um, points towards, uh, points to, to, to Saturn, mm-hmm. who seeks to blind the minds of, of the people. Mm-hmm. And yet God has given the light that it may, it may shine. And as we um, come to the end of our study today, uh, thanks, Brother Herbert, for joining me. Um, any takeaway, what uh, would, you love to, would you like to leave with our uh, viewers today? So for the viewers, I'll just read uh, my, my last one of my favorite um, passages that I marked uh, in, in the lesson. It says, the lack of knowledge on the part of the lost is not because they could not know. Mm. It is because they would not know. Mm. So it's a matter of choice. It's not because that you, when you, if you wanted to read the Bible and read the messages of God, you would not understand it because God has promised that the Holy Spirit will help you to understand. Mm. But it is because they would not know. It's a choice that they made. Then it says, man had every opportunity to know the truth, but chose not to believe and certain blinded their eyes. Mm. So after of your choice, then the devil takes advantage. And one of the good things that we are always told over and over again in the Bible is that he cannot read our thoughts and, until we start doing the actions, mm. then he can take over the actions. Mm. Thank you very much uh, for that powerful thought. And one person also once said that um, he who does not he who does not read is not different yeah. from he who cannot read. Yes. So yes, yes. if you can read, but you do not read, you are not different from him Just the who, uh, mm. who, who mm. cannot read. And that said, um, it's not with, um, you know, with our reading yes. that gives us that knowledge, but yeah. as the Bible says, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And therefore, uh, may God um, help us all as we study his word, that as we go through his word, the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth and bring us to understanding and that we may be able also to identify the error uh, that the devil brings our way. Uh, until we meet again next time, may God bless you and as you continue to study his word, may he lead, may he lead you into all truths. Amen. God bless. Amen.